Hello everyone, I'm Marbrené and welcome to my series on world building. Here we're developing the world of Chroma Islands. In this episode, we're going to take a look at three more Jade Champions, the three green sisters here. And I'm going to paint one in two different styles. Let's take a look. Alright, in this episode, we're still in the Jade tribe here, on the edges of the islands. Before I move on to other races, I wanted to tackle a few more champions for the Jade tribe, just like the male Jade champion that I did a little while back. And in this case, to help me kind of figure out the characters a little bit faster, because I wanted to make three characters, three sisters, that was the original idea, so if what if those three champions were actually related, maybe born from the same tree at the very same time and raised by the same parents? What would that be like? What would they look like? And I thought that was kind of a cool background story for them. But anyways, since I'm working on multiple characters, I wanted to try and start with a different style, something that's a little bit simpler, a little bit more stylized maybe than usual, which is exactly what I'm starting on right here. Especially when I am going to be tackling different characters, I like to work on them all at the same time rather than one after the other. In their case, you know, they're related, so I want them to have very, very similar physical characteristics, but also I don't want them to be all clones, and so having them one-to-one, -one, side by side, kind of helps to make them overall the same, but add different variants on the design to make them all unique. And as usual, in this case, the workflow is going to be pretty simple. I just start with a layer where I'm going to have my line art, and then right underneath that, once I'm done with the line art, I fill in the lines so that I have a flat color to work on, on a separate layer, of course, that I can then lock and finally start adding the colors without worrying about, you know, painting outside of my lines. So nothing new here. And of course, as usual, if this is your first episode, you know, I highly recommend that you check out the previous one. So it'll make a little bit more sense. For that, you can find a link in the top right corner of the screen here or down in the description below. All right. Anyways, who are these sisters and how do they fit in the Jade tribe? So I've mentioned in the past that the green people in general have these, uh, you know, per tribe, they have these champions that are essentially just really, really old people. But the green people, as they get older, they become stronger before they move on to the next kind of uh, state in life. And the champions of those tribes are the strongest of them all. And also there's more than one. So I've mentioned previously that in their case here, in the Jade tribe's case, there would be a a bunch of them so i don't know exactly how many probably under a dozen but i'm not sure exactly how many and i wanted to have a better idea of what the rest of the lineup might look like especially since i already had a male i thought having the female counterpart would give me a pretty good idea and so i was pretty inspired to uh, to come up with different different heroes different not heroes but different champions for the jade tribe but females this time so the main idea for their design was very inspired by what the male looked like initially so the male was really top heavy like a big chest big arms decent legs but i wanted to try to invert that for the females so have the females instead focus on their thighs and their legs just in general rather than the top of their body now the top is you know it's it's still pretty buff as you can see here you know they're pretty thick although this is a more stylized version of the drawing so they're not going to be as you know as chunky but the legs definitely will be and i was thinking that you know where the males kind of fight with their fists the females could fight with their legs a bit more and their tail so just like every other champion you know those three sisters are pretty old that kind of comes with the job more like the other way around and as with all the other champions you know they are always trying to work together you know there's no competition here within the green people just in general and so i thought it was a really cool kind of vibe for these three to have you know pretty much live their entire lives together fighting together and how potentially powerful that that combination might be you know, if there was ever a fight between them and maybe some other other races, as I'm sure there will be, because that sounds pretty cool. Now, for um, for sisters to exist, for siblings to even happen uh, within the within a tribe of the green people, they have to be born from the same tree. So pretty much everybody that is born from the same tree is related, is a sibling. It might be older ones, younger ones. Some trees might have more crystals, some other trees might have fewer. And again, the crystals are what those those creatures are born out of. And so in this case, the story that I wanted to, uh, to really emphasize was maybe that they were all born from the same the same tree, but maybe that tree had uh, had something wrong with it or maybe had been like partially destroyed or something like that. And the three sisters are really the only survivors from that tree. So they're the only three creatures that ever came out 
of it. And so maybe the tree, you know, burnt or something like that, partially. And they're the only three crystals that were found before it was too late. Maybe it's a different race that, uh, that destroyed the tree or something like that. Or a creature or monster, I don't know yet. I mentioned, uh, I talked about this a little bit in the last episode, where, you know, it's more likely for a champion to be born out of the tree from another champion. And so that's very similar to what happened here. You know, even though the, the tree was mostly destroyed and only those three survived, it was still the tree of a champion. So it was, you know, probably like a really 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 big tree a really important tree and something terrible happened and they came out of that predisposed to to being champions themselves and so yeah so there's a couple of things here that uh that's very interesting when you have three characters like that that are deeply related. You know, a couple of things that I was thinking maybe might be might be a good fit for them were things like, you know, they're not they're not twins really because they're not of none of that in this world, but or maybe they have some sort of, you know, mental connection where they can almost communicate without words, which again makes them extremely extremely strong in combat. It's almost having three brains fighting all at once, completely in sync or something like that. But anyways, now, beyond that, you know, once you have those characters and kind of like the, the overall settings, I was trying to think of what makes them unique, because again, those are not clones, they're just individuals, and so the first thing I always like to think about is kind of their their way of life. Are they more square? Are they more like, hard to contain? And so in this case, what I, what I kind of ended up with is the one with the single horn, the one that's kind of curved. That one would be closer to a monk, so somebody that really follows the rules, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever those rules are. But it's also also very very strict so maybe the one that brings you know that brings the sisters together when they're fighting maybe or when they used to fight they're too old for that now hundreds of years old but I was thinking of her more as the the leader maybe of the three kind of like the neutral character and since I have three of them um, well the other ones one is going to be maybe overly nice maybe a little bit a little bit innocent a little bit goofy and the other one a little bit too severe maybe the one that gets mad the first one or something like that so it's not much of a background story like individually but our Alright, this is kind of stuff that allows me to uh, to start thinking about the design, what they're going to wear, and also how you know how they're going to present themselves, carry themselves, their their stance or pose maybe. So rather than thinking about things that are very very precise, giving them a general personality first, I find that uh, is really really helpful when it comes to creating new characters. So as you've seen here, I've started to work on one of them, uh, the the leader, in fact, the one that I've uh, just mentioned in my usual style, because of course you know the more stylized versions was just as a kind of a brainstorming session for me where I have limited amount of details to to work with and so I can really focus on the essentials kind of the foundation of her design and I really liked where this was going so I figured that I would uh, actually paint one of them again uh, at least for now in my more usual style so that I can place her next to the male champion and see kind of yeah have a better idea of that that final lineup what I might look like so in her particular case since she's the one that's a little bit more strict I figured that I would try to cover her up a little bit more than the other um, than the other sisters or the other people in the tribe in general. So if you've seen the first episode of the series where I kind of covered uh, the green people and the red people, uh, the green people, you know, they don't wear much. Um, when we're talking about the males, it's only kind of like pants. So they're always kind of just half half dressed up. The females, they really don't wear anything up top and just something to cover their crotch kind of thing. So kind of similar to what you would find in a really, really remote like uh, tribe you know in the jungle in our own world but yeah maybe she's a little bit more aware of the fact that she's exposing herself <laughs> I don't know uh, and she chose to instead you know wear a little bit more cover herself a little bit more with armor maybe something that's a little bit more practical so that she doesn't injure herself as easily but since I've mentioned in the past that their body almost turns to armor where they don't have to wear anything maybe in her case what she's wearing is something that is super like legendary something that's even harder than than her own skin or her own exoskeleton who knows as you can see in the original lineup you know the other two sisters are really not going to have much in comparison but yeah, this is pretty much what I have um, for for these characters here. So in terms of their lifestyle, you know, I was thinking that it might be a little bit different than the other champions, where the champions are usually kind of solitary. You know, they're they're just too old at this point that they really don't care about you know socializing too much. Uh, they're just there to carry on their duty until they move on. 
uh, they move on to the next phase in their life. But in their case, I was thinking that they might be the, the champions that create maybe some sort of a bridge between the regular people and the champions because they're more, uh, maybe more social. Maybe that's something that they've retained, you know, as, as sisters, maybe living together compared to all the other champions. And so I felt that would be kind of a cool connection that, that they could have and it could actually help make the Jade Tribe a little bit more unified instead of having the champions just be the, the guardians and not nothing else really like you would probably find in the other tribes but yeah that's pretty much it when it comes to uh, the background story of this whole thing here as far as her design you can see it kind of evolved a little bit so um you know she's still wearing more uh, but instead it's more kind of like a half cape or something like that or just like a piece of a uh, piece of cloth that she's carrying around instead of being something that's attached to her waist something I felt worked a little bit better in a more realistic style and of course this illustration here is not complete so I'll keep on working on it and I'm going to upload the full video the full time-lapse video a little bit later so make sure that you check that out and as usual I want to mention my full art school program if this is something that you eventually want to be able to do do as an artist. If you follow this channel, I'm sure you've seen something about it because I post almost weekly the recordings of the streams that I have with my students every week. And so if you're a little bit curious, of course, you know, I'd check out the trailer for it and of course the curriculum, but I'd also definitely check out the streams to get a better idea of kind of like the progression of the students and the content of the course. I have started this project a little over a year and a half ago and already I've had students tell me that they found job thanks to it, which is completely blowing my mind and so where I thought it might be useful now I actually have confirmation and so I definitely definitely recommend that you check it out or that you send a link to someone that might be interested in something like this in finding success as a digital artist you can learn more in the top right corner of the screen right here or of course I'll put the links in the description below so that is going to wrap it up for this episode exploring some more hero characters from the chroma island project and next time we are going to explore a different race Race. And so I hope that you check it out. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and hit that bell button as well to make sure that you get the next episode right in your inbox the second that it comes out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.